Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I are with Manny Pacheco, the historian of Hollywood extraordinaire. Manny, uh, you remember a couple of weeks ago, I don't know when, not, not too long ago, we talked about the scariest villains, right. the bad guys in movies, because you can't have a hero without a bad guy. That's right. So time has moved on. It's the fall. Pumpkins are glistening in the garden. There's uh, kids out there with bags full of candy. It's now time to talk about monsters, Halloween monsters. Now, it doesn't have to be a Halloween show, but let's talk about the difference between the great monsters of then and now. Well, there was a recent poll taken. Uh, unfortunately, the people who were involved in the poll were influencers. They weren't Hollywood historians. They weren't cinephiles. They were what they call influencers of, of all kinds of shapes. But that to me is code for they were very young. <laughs> and they were asked they were asked um, who the scariest monsters were. And they came up with, you know, today's scary monsters. But I think they pale in comparison to um, the ones of the past. And I only say they, com they, they, they don't compare as well is because uh, there's a lot of added digital imagery to, to, to kind of beef up their gravitas as scary. But to me, you know, when you're talking about Freddy Krueger or Chucky or Jason Voorhees, or Michael Myers from Halloween. It's just the same thing over and over again. A lot of teenagers getting slashed. And, you know, it's just not, for me, that's just not the great monsters of all time. They are good monsters. They have been very creative monsters. Leatherface from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, they're fine. Yeah. But, I mean, we're I, talking... Well they should me, have been all-time greats. Uh, allow me to interrupt for just a second. I don't consider those characters monsters. My, when when I hear the word monster, I think of Mothra. I think of the creature from the Black Lagoon. I I think of otherworldly, you know, maybe aliens or just weird creatures. They're, they're the they're the creatures that I loved in the movies as a kid that just came out of nowhere. You've, you've never heard of them before, and well, they wait, were scary. Wait, wait, let's, let, we're having a, a monster definition problem in my, in my third of this screen <laughs> here, okay? We are. So are, are you talking about like the Frankensteins and the Lon yes. Chaney? Yeah. yeah. So, so because we're, we don't want to forget what has been forgotten, is that? So we're, that, that's the clue here. So, let's, Manny, why don't you take us down, uh, a walk down your favorite monster lane? Well, you know, if you go through the silent era, the big three, obviously, were Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the John Barrymore version from 1920. Uh -huh. It did a great job. It really put Barrymore's name on the map, as did uh, what Lon Chaney Sr. did with, with The Hunchback of Notre Dame and, oh, Phantom, yeah. and Phantom of the Opera. I think yes. those were the classic monster films. Uh, the Man Who Laughs, that, that was a scary film. Not sure that the, 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 the villain, Conrad Veidt, was necessarily a monster, but he did have monstrous looks, enough so that the, uh, the, the uh, creators of Batman would use that face to, to obviously create the Joker. But those were the silent monsters. But really, the, the, the studio that really embodied the golden age of film monsters was Universal Studios and, of course, Carl Lemley Jr., who had a big thing about monsters and uh, gothic mo monsters, and particularly Dracula, Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the yeah. Invisible Man. Though, and, and the mummy, and, and you can't forget the mummy. So, yeah. I mean, these were the big five of the 1930s. I mean, you had some villains in that mix, Igor in Son of Frankenstein, played by Bela Lugosi, or, or Renfield in Dracula. Those were, those were not monsters. They were the henchmen. They were the, um, the sure. villains. But the real monsters, of course, were Frankenstein. Yeah. Which, by the way, it was Frankenstein's monster. His real name was Adam. Believe it or not, the monster was named Adam. Oh. Frankenstein was the doctor, right? Doctor Frankenstein. So, right. um, so when we talk about Frankenstein, we, we should be talking about Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, that's and, true. And of course, Dracula, which came first, by the way, of the two, and then of course the Invisible Man, which you know I think gets a lot of 
you know, overlook because of the two were so big and then the mummy was so different. I think we I think we kind of bypassed the invisible man and how horrible this this crazed individual was played by Claude Rains. Yeah. I mean, he was he he probably killed more people in that 1 hour and 10 minutes than Dracula, Frankenstein and the mummy combined. You know, it's something I think I think that one of the things uh, and it's wonderful that we have you here as our historian because uh, what's happened is, as a contemporary issue, since none of us were young at the time that these movies came out, we could see how this scared the crap out of people. Okay, yeah. but by today's standards, okay, with with the Freddy Kruegers and all the, the 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 special effects, and I know the only the only film that ever made me jump out of my seat was when the the, the girl's head spun in The Exorcist. I mean, well, that's that, 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 to, but me, that's that scary. to me is the scariest of all. R right. Reagan, Reagan, her name was yeah. Reagan. The character's name was Reagan right. in The Exorcist. I don't think there was anything scarier. I, I, to this day, I've never seen The Omen because The Exorcist scared me so much. Wow. But what I'm saying to you is that from a, as contemporaries of movies today, when we take a look at those movies today, they're probably not as scary because we're saying, well, how lame. But in the day people probably jumped out of their seats. Well, to be fair, um, I don't think that the directors of these films um, actually thought that they were supposed to be scary monster movies anyway. They looked at them as black comedies yeah. in the 30s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were supposed to kind of chuckle along with being well, scared. I don't know about that. I, I don't no, know about no, that. No, that's, no, think... that's, that's the way the directors saw it. Well, I, you know, I look at the directing of those old uh, scary movies versus the directing of certainly the more modern, even even in the 60s, uh, scary movies. And the directors really were using techniques that would surprise you. So you would be shocked, you know. Um, in the older movies, you weren't necessarily shocked. It was the storyline. It was the plot that yeah. was scary in itself. James Whale, the director of Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein and Son of Frankenstein and The Invisible Man, would be interviewed and he would say, my movies are comedies. <laughs> They're not monster movies. They are comedies. Yeah. They're designed to entertain and get you to chuckle and laugh. And I am very and he was very clear about that even to the day he died. So, I mean, to me, I mean, look, I'm a kid. I'm watching television in 1967, 66, 65. And there comes the transformation of Lon Chaney from Lyle, from um, Larry Talbot to the Wolfman. Yeah. And I'm screaming out of my socks. My, my, my mother had to run into the room and change the channel because that transformation scared me so much at seven or eight years of age. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it I, you know, the obviously time has marched on and we now have makeup techniques, special um, digital techniques that the filmmaker can use. But I think the basis of all of these scary monsters is that they're they're almost out of control. That we don't know where they came from. We don't know what they what they want to do, and that's what kind of what makes them scary. It's really the basic plot of, yeah. Oh my God, what do we do? And then came, of course, the monsters of the 1950s, which was born out of reality. It wasn't that the monsters themselves were scary, although they were. They were born out of the, a very scary idea that radiation and fallout from nuclear sure. holocaust, a nuclear war, you know, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, that kind of thing, yeah. could create monsters uh, who were long dormant or 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 would change the actual DNA of a monster. You think of uh, it came from beneath the sea, and all of a sudden there's this giant octopus or yeah. the beast at twenty thousand phantom uh, fathoms. And you get this giant dinosaur. But of course, for me, it's always them. That 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 was the giant ants that really oh, got me. They and, and, then, and then there was the psychological monsters, the, the pods, you know, you know, from uh, oh, what's the name of that movie with uh, Kevin McCarthy? And, oh, sure, it made up there and right in here in Glendora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, those they were all living in a swimming pool, right? The, the pod people. 
Yeah, those pods that just I, I can't really, think of the name of it. Either. You look, you look at them, and they look exactly the same. Yep. And and they scare the bejesus out of you. I mean, sure. it's just it's crazy how how scary that is. And 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 for me, that psychological horror uh, is what led to movies like Psycho and Night of the Living Dead. And I mean, psychological monsters emerged and. and Today we call them serial killers, <laughs> but by they the were way, by the way, by, monsters. By, by the way, I, we we passed over kind of quickly. I want to give a shout out for one of my favorite uh, monsters with Godzilla. Godzilla, oh, that's again one, one, the, one of my favorite ever. A classic. It's from the 50s. Yeah. It's 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 that again the radiation causing mm -hmm. this this giant monster to emerge. Same thing with the creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. I mean, these were monsters that were 1950s genre sometimes they were eloquently done i think them is one of the best it came from outer space and yeah um and 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 the like um right, the don't forget i can't forget uh, the swamp people with adrian barbeau but then was... yeah but you, you're jumping to the 70s we're in the 50s stay in the oh, 50s okay. stay with us just stay with us <laughs> john and i like to you move in a certain order and you just bounce like the blob well, well I, I, I didn't write, is, I, didn't, I, I didn't write it down. I didn't write it you down. You know, that was another monster that really scared me. The blob. Oh my gosh. That thing just oozing out of that movie theater and then jumping onto that diner. Oh my yeah. gosh. That just I as a kid, ah, oh, and it was on the million dollar movie, so I saw it five days in a row. Oh my gosh. I was scared every <laughs> single time. The blob. That is, you know, that to me is good. But here's the thing. Those 50s movies started to use more and more uh, more, and more modern techniques to create special effects. The B ones didn't. They just used clothes and yeah. things looked really awful, tarantula and that kind of stuff really didn't look as good as them. But that led to those films that used those digital effects. I think, I think the first modern monster movie was Night of the Living Dead, which of course then later spawned, you know, Day of the Dead and all the sure. other. Yeah, I mean, so those those monster movies from the 60s started using more technical effects. And that's where you go to and, and end up with, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and, yeah. and Jason with Friday the 13th and, of course, Halloween. I mean, all of th those slasher films, um, I think, you know, I think are, are just a little bit scarier because they love to show the excess of blood. And I don't, you never saw blood. You never saw blood in a Frankenstein film. You never right. saw blood, you know, when the Wolfman was attacking its victim viciously. You never saw blood. I mean, red, red colored blood. I mean, that really awful blood, except maybe in a Roger Corman horror film. But you didn't see it in Psycho. You saw a little bit of that chocolate syrup go into down the drain, but you never see the penetration of the knife. Um, but all of a sudden, you start seeing blood in those 1960 cheapy films like The Terror with Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson, or 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 um, Trilogy of Terrors, or you know all of these silly The Raven. All these Roger Corman films introduced blood into the mix. It was Roger Corman who was the real game changer when it came to monsters and the and the showing of blood. Um, finally, finally, he, he, finally, a recognition of Roger Corman in front of, <laughs> in front of me. Wow. I know, I know, you're I'm right. I'm honored. There is one other group that I do want to mention, and that were the Val, Newton, uh, Val Luton horrors of the 1940s, Bedlam and Isle mm. of the Dead and the Body Snatcher, these very gothic old school it was great for boris karloff who was aging and actually was now in his you know mid to late 60s and he was able to play these characters really got these gothic characters that you know the, the whole atmosphere of the val luton the cat people was another one of his big ones uh but it, that whole atmosphere was then transposed in the late 1960s when on tv when when uh, dark shadows debuted yeah. Very gothic looking films. Sure. And and the and those films ended up becoming very, very popular in the nineteen sixties when do dark shadows emerged. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's an interesting uh look at filmmaking and how it's changed over the years. A, a very narrow uh issue of monsters, 
But I, I have to say that uh, I, I, I don't know that we've improved on the scariness necessarily. No. I, I think there's so much, it's, it's basic drama. You yeah. Know, if you can find something that just scares the bejesus out of you, makes there's you jump just, out of your seat, there, it doesn't there, matter whether it's a monster or a psychological killer. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's just no plot to the individuals who are slashed and killed in, in, the, in the Freddy Krueger and, and, and the Jason Voorhees movies. It's kind of like, to me, and excuse me, because I realize that this sounds a little bit, well, it sounds a little over the top, but today's monster films, like those films, uh, to me, that is horror por porno. <laughs> It's they're, okay. they're they're just pornographic in my mind in, in in the sense that they're profane. I don't I, you you don't get any love for the characters. You just know they're next. Yeah. And <laughs> and that's not the way it should have been. It, they they should have they should have a life. They're just thrown in there to be. Well, it, seems, it, it seems like a more modern movie that's a throwback to certainly not comedy as you've described some of the early ones, but Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So that that. That if that were an old That's, movie, it would have fit in your kind of description. Yeah, and quite and quite frankly, the Academy honored it as the first quote unquote horror or monster movie to ever win an Oscar for Best Picture. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I did remember the pod movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they went to the great. That. great it's film. Very psychologically, it, it's a great film. I mean, yeah. really scary. Yeah. By the way, yeah, are, are we at a point now where I can do a, a shout out for Jeff Goldblum and in, in The Fly? Well, for my money, I like the older version better. Vincent Price, really? Jeff Goldblum, Vincent Price, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I'm going to go with Vincent Price. Thank you. Well, very I don't know. My my problem with Vincent Price was he always had his tongue in his cheek. Yeah, you know, yeah. he. I don't think he believed it. He was scary. But you know right. what? I think monster movies are more fun when there's a little bit of humor. That's the point I'm trying to make. And, you know, even though Boris Karloff was just a terrific monster in every way, shape or form, he always took them too seriously, which was great for the audience. But his colleagues kind of laughed at him. He goes, you know, for a guy that's so boring in real life, he really takes his craft a little too seriously when he plays yeah, the monsters. They never... They didn't like they didn't like that he took it so seriously. But we remember his name and not most of those colleagues who didn't take right. him seriously. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, you do remember Lon Chaney Jr. and Bella Lugosi, who but, what a ham that guy was. So and, so, uh, and Vincent so Manny, Price with his tongue in his cheek. I, I so, get that. So, yeah. so Manny, if you had to pick your top scary movie of forgotten Hollywood world, what would it be? Give me well, for number me, one. With, number one, I always say the same film. It's them. Those giant mm. ants had yeah. to be the... And they, they did it. And, you know, they only had a couple of ants to play with. They had a very small budget. But you know what really <laughs> makes... I'm going to tell you what makes it for me. Number one, you got great casting. James Whitmore, James Arness. Mm. And actually, the, the, the person who steals the movie is Edmund Gwynn. You know, Santa Claus from Miracle yeah. on 34th Street. He, he is so perfect as the professor who explains the nature and study of ants. And he does it in such a scientifically friendly way that, you know, who didn't have an ant farm when they were growing up? I had an ant farm. And so, you know, if you can think of those now nine feet tall. Yeah. That was really remarkably believable. I believe that they could grow like that. And when you're a kid and you can believe that, what terror! I mean, that is absolutely the number one choice for me. Well, I know what to get. I know what to get, Manny, for his uh, uh, Christmas present from us is a, a box full of Rage. <laughs> <laughs> that you were going to say an ant farm, but you know the other one too is again Reagan. Um, you know um, Linda Blair in The Exorcist. Sure. I, I, I I'm not going to see the 2023 version of The Exorcist. I never saw The Omen. I never saw The Exorcist again. That yeah. movie absolutely disturbed me. Well, yeah. I, bet, I bet it's a, it, you think twice about having a bowl of green pea soup. Well, I think twice about my religion being Catholic. I mean, that, that whole thing is so believable because of our religious beliefs. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what really is the scary aspect is that the devil can, you know, 
invade you. I mean, that is a real scary premise if you're religious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Well, this has been a great discussion, off, Manny. Manny. A lot of fun talking about monsters. Thank you so much. I'm going to sleep with the light on, thanks to you two. <laughs> yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.